Here's the rundown for the busy. Toyota began exporting its cars to America in the late 50s. They weren't very good, so they stopped to figure things out for a while. Then came the 70s and the oil crisis and everyone wanted a compact car. Toyota shined through the competition with affordability and well put together products. The cars caught on and people loved how Toyotas always seemed to work. To do this, Toyota applies its production system that focuses on delivering products just on time and drilling a workforce with the mentality of continuous improvement. Now, let's go on to the full video. Let's first ask the question, why do people buy cars? Most likely, shoppers are looking for an affordable and reliable mode of transportation that can get them from point A to point B. In contrast to automotive journalists, who are the people recommending which car model consumers should buy, the majority of shoppers aren't really looking for handling characteristics, acceleration times, or how well they do in drift competitions. Instead, most people just want to get to where they want to be, on time, reliably. This is where Toyota comes in. A brand that has cemented its name beside the word reliability and boasting such expertise in manufacturing products with this moniker that it reinvented the production processes, changing the game with every manufacturing industry following suit. Let's go places and see how Toyotas became so reliable. It didn't start out so well for Toyota in 1958 when the company began to export its first car to America, the Crown, and utility vehicle, the Land Cruiser. The brand was able to ease out a total whopping of 288 sales from that year, with one of them being a lonely Land Cruiser. This didn't come as a surprise as the Crown wasn't designed for North American driving styles. It was too slow, guzzled too much gas, and unstable when traveling on freeways at speed. Not to mention that it was too small to be comfortable for Americans as well. Just three years later, in 1961, Toyota pulled the plug on the exports and began developing a product especially designed for American drivers. Four years later, Toyota would introduce the Toyota Corona in 1965. This time, it didn't suck. Toyota had learned from its mistakes and built a quality product. A mechanic who worked for GM at the time had praised the Corona highly, noting that GM has never made a car that good, and not even Cadillac came close to matching the Toyota's workmanship. Sales caught up to its praise and Toyota became the third best-selling import brand in 1967, just two years after the Corona's introduction. The big change in the automotive marketplace came during the first oil crisis in the early 70s. America was thirsty for gas and OPEC was reluctant to quench it. The theory of downsizing became a reality for many Americans. Toyota was a real competitor now as the American Big Three didn't have good answers for the compact segment and Volkswagen was still riding on the aging Beetle that was developed over 30 years ago during World War II. The change in consumer trends laid out the foundation for Toyota and many other Japanese automakers in the 70s. By the 1980s, Japanese firms led the automotive industry with manufacturing efficiency and physical productivity while demonstrating incredibly high inventory turnover. The simple explanation is that Japanese automotive manufacturers, especially Toyota, is really good at producing to meet market demands rather than producing to meet production schedules. This methodology was eased by the fact that Japanese firms offered simpler option packages, eliminated annual model changes and standardizing components across its product range. In contrast, American car makers would often suffer from logistics lock jams from endless customization options and updated their models annually just for the sake of marketing. This approach is a big part of the production system from Toyota and the mantra of just-in-time production. This brings us to Kaizen, a Japanese business philosophy of constant improvement. For Toyota, it's a mentality that's shared throughout the group, from the CEO to the day laborer. Everyone has a say on how to improve the final product. An assembly line worker has the ability to stop the entire production line to fix an occurring problem. Therefore, subsequent assemblies aren't affected. This is vastly different than American production lines where problems are often fixed after the assembly process. Toyota products have the perception of being family grocery getters, and to put it frankly, boring. This is part of the reason why they're so reliable as well. Toyota spends a lot longer in research and development to make sure a technology is mature enough before sending it to the production lines. This is the mantra of keep it simple silly, as more updates and complexity often means more problems with reliability. Meanwhile, a finely engineered product from Ferrari has the perception of being the best of the best. It's not something one would particularly be able to use for let's say a million miles. Toyota, for the most part, keeps a simple product line with minimal updates. The brand is known to not introduce too many new features at once, and is selective of changes. If it ain't broke, 
don't fix it. Many aspects of the way Toyota approaches its engineering problems have rubbed off on its competitors. This is very much a golden age of the automobile. We currently have powertrains reliably putting out over 300 horsepower from almost every single automobile manufacturer. Remembering that around the same time Toyota began selling the Corona in the 60s, the Lamborghini Miura was the fastest production car at the time, pushing 345 horsepower. We can now access the same performance from an engine used in a pickup truck or motors running on electricity alone. Whether you love or hate the brand, Toyota's reputation of building products that just work is something a marketing team cannot achieve. Their influence on how to make things is a major reason why we enjoy affordable cars, electronics, and gadgets that make our daily lives easier. And of course, make sure that they work too. Thank you for watching an Arban Copy video series. If you found this video helpful, a like and a subscription goes a long way. And I will see you guys in the next one.